Hi, and welcome back to the Thriftier Person Morning Coffee. It's a morning show. I wanted to talk today about banks and credit unions. There's two types of credit unions to start off with. There's a state chartered and there's a federal chartered. Federal chartered have to follow federal rules for the credit union. State charters are ones that are administered by the, the rules and regulations of the state. One thing that you need to know when you're looking for a, uh, a institution to put your money into, bank, federally chartered, or state chartered credit union. Number one, well, we all know about banks. We've heard about them. They During the mortgage crisis, they refused or delayed or whatever the case may be. People who were having hard times making mortgage payments, well, I gather they'd rather own houses than, uh, than to keep the people in the houses, therefore making uh, money by uh, having people pay their mortgages. More homes were sucked up by banks than by any other organization. Kind of sad, and I think that tells you quite a lot about banks in general. Remember, banks have to answer to shareholders. Banks have to make profits for shareholders, and you can buy stocks in banks. You cannot do so in credit unions. Credit unions are owned by the members who have deposits on account with credit unions. Uh, so we've all heard about the banks that spend in the news, the ATM fees, the minimum balance in your checking account, the minimum balance in your savings account. If you have, for instance, there's one bank I know that if you have under, a, if you have a hundred or less in your savings account, they charge you a monthly fee because you're under a hundred dollars in your savings account. And at some point, it will be depleted, and you'll get a notice from the bank saying, "Oh, we're sorry, we sucked all your money out of your savings account month by month because you didn't keep a minimum balance, and now we." own all your money and well have a nice day and thank you so much for banking with us uh, let's talk a little bit more about credit unions because we know everything there is to know at this particular point through the news and other sources about banks fees ATM fees minimum fees these fees those fees etc etc just absolutely ridiculous I think banks should go the way of the dinosaurs in my personal opinion but moving on to credit unions two things that you need to know about credit unions uh, number one, when you have a credit union, you need to look for the services that you need, loans, mortgages, et cetera, et cetera. You tend to find better rates both in interest, and granted interest is crap at this current time, but better rates in interest, better rates in car loans, better rates in mortgages. You'll find that they're much more flexible than banks because, remember, banks have to make profits. They have to give their shareholders that money. Credit unions don't. Um, they're usually non-profit. They make enough money to be able to keep their lights on and you know maintain their computer systems and so forth, but they don't have to pay shareholders. That's one of the key things, key differences between the two. When you're looking for the services that you want from your credit union, checking, savings, money market, whatever the case may be, uh, you need to find one that's going to be suitable for the needs that you have. Something also to take into consideration as we've seen from uh, uh, credit card companies that are issued through banks, while well, interest rates are through the roof, which is funny because banks borrow from the Federal Reserve at 0%, as I discussed in another uh, one of my little tutorials here. Uh, so if they're borrowing 0% from the federal government, why are they charging 19, 20, 21% interest on credit cards? It's uh, absolutely ridiculous. I suppose they can because, well, uh, I'm just going to put it flat out. If you're dumb enough to get a credit card from a bank, well, then it's your own fault. Um, on credit unions, uh, only about 52% at this current time of credit unions offer their own credit card programs that are managed and maintained by the credit unions. So when you go, if one of the things you're interested in is becoming a member and there are certain requirements that you must meet, for instance, my credit union uh, required that I made a donation uh, to open up my uh, account with the credit union, which went to a charitable organization. You open up one with the bank, they don't require you to make a charitable donation, they just nickel and dime you until you're dead. So. Eh, one of the benefits of a credit union. You're doing something for people instead of doing something for shareholders and, and big bank CEOs with their 5, 10, 15, 30 million dollar bonuses per year. Uh, on credit unions as well, uh, 
you'll find that federal credit unions, for instance, can't charge more than 18% interest, even if you default. Please do not default. Uh, credit unions are great places. Don't default on anything because it's not good for your credit report. It's going to cause you problems. In some states, they base your insurance rates on your, on your FICO score. So it's not a good idea to default if you can absolutely avoid it. Uh, the best way to do that is don't spend more than you make. Don't spend more than you can pay off in one month. Always pay your balances in full. That way the bank doesn't get any interest whatsoever on your money. So like I said, uh, a $100 pair of jeans doesn't end up costing you $230 when you're done paying it off over six, seven, eight months because you make the minimum payment in absolutely ridiculous way. Uh, uh, an absolutely ridiculous way about going around paying your bills. So for credit unions, uh, on average, if it's not a oh, credit union, if the cards are not, uh, managed by a bank and they're actually managed by the credit union itself, you'll find that the interest rates on your credit cards are not more than 18%. If you default, usually you can get a much better rate. For instance, I've had my credit card, which is the same as a bank-issued credit card, same amount of credit. The bank one is 20.99%, but my credit union, which has the same amount of available credit, is only 10.4%. And they do, they charge the same amount for if you withdraw cash from your card. I don't recommend it with a bank card because at that point you're paying what twenty five twenty six percent on the balance of the money that you paid, and that's just ridiculous. On a credit card, when you borrow, you borrow if you borrow take money out from your from your credit card or you make a purchase, the interest rate is exactly the same. There's not two sets of rates. One for purchases and one for cash advances, like a bank, is exactly the same rate whether it's a cash withdrawal or a purchase. Uh, number two, there are no penalty APRs. Uh, penalty APRs, you have a 9.5% good luck to you. With a bank credit card, you make one late payment, it's one day late, guess what? You're automatically at 29.95%, and I think they keep it at that for a minimum of six months, and then it's up to them to review to reduce your interest rate. But here's the great part of it, that it's great for banks and sucks for you. If, it, if, you, if you default to 29.95%, you can have them review your account. They may take it down to 29.5%. Now, the six months, you might get 29%. So as you can see, it takes a long time to get that credit, uh, that interest rate down when you when you miss a payment or you're a day late or whatever the case may be. Banks don't have to care. They have to answer the shareholders. They have to make a profit. So keep that in mind when you're looking at bank credit cards compared to credit union credit cards. Um, there's no cash advance or balance transfer fees in most cases with uh, credit union issued credit cards. Um, there's no annual fees in most cases with a uh, credit union credit card. You can't say the same for most bank cards. Uh, and the late fees uh, are usually below $25. Try that with a bank. Try anything with a bank. Try to make money yeah, with money that you've deposited in the bank. After they nickel and dime you, you're lucky you have 15 cents in there. And at that point, you have below $100. So therefore, your account's got to be closed. Um, so those are some things to consider. So when you're checking for a credit union, number one, make sure I would go with federally insured. If you go uh, federal, uh, federally chartered uh, credit union, if you go with a state chartered credit union, uh, the rules and the regulations that, that they have to follow are state issued. If you go with a federal credit union, then all the rules and regulations that they have to follow are under the federal mandate for credit unions. Big difference. And you can find that out by doing a search on... Um, Federal credit unions versus state credit unions, and you'll find the difference right there. Unfortunately, in most circumstances that I've come across, state uh, credit unions, unfortunately, have outsourced their credit card companies or their credit card divisions to banks. So if you apply for a credit card and, you're, and you pull your credit report, you'll notice that instead of saying the name of the credit union that pulled your credit report to check and see if you're eligible for a credit card, you'll notice that it's a, a set of banks that went and looked at your credit score to decide if you are worthy enough to be part of their high interest rate credit card plan. Not in your best interest. Uh, if you're going to buy something, you know, you want a good interest rate and plus you want to pay it off within 30 days, you'll have a much better time if you have to carry a balance with a credit union that has manages their own credit union department than you will with any bank at this current time. So that's the basics. Look up the difference between, a, as I said, a state chartered and a federal chartered credit union. 
If you default, as I said, it doesn't go above 18 or 18.99 percent. Try that when the bank is 29.99 or 95. That's as bad as a payday loan, for goodness sake. So that's some basic stuff you need to know about credit unions. Make sure you find one that offers the services that you want. Uh, you know, make sure you can look. They usually they have credit union finders, so you're able to find you know uh, an ATM. Uh, where you can actually, where there's a no fee ATM, they, I think there's 23,000 in the general network. You can go and make a withdrawal without having to pay that, you know, ATM transaction fee, which can be anywhere from a dollar seventy-five up to five dollars. Just to do a bal check your balance on your debit card. It's just a literally ridiculous situation. Um, so that's some basics about credit unions and about banks. You need to decide, do you want your money to stay in an account and grow, or do you want to put your money into, say, a bank and pay all these fees and watch your money drop as fast as inflation will eat up money that you've invested over time. So that is the basics of credit unions and the basics of banks. It's up to you to go and find out uh, which is best for you and which ones charge fees, what kind of fees they charge, what kind of restrictions you have. For credit unions, for the most part, they have some kind of membership requirement. For instance, my credit union required me to make a $25 donation to a charity of my choice and I could become a member. You go to a bank, you open up a bank, they don't require you to make any kind of donation to any kind of charity to become, to become a member. You can just walk in and sign, but when you sign on the dotted line, you also sign up for all the fees and nickel and diming that you're going to get for the rest of your life. Some banks, I don't understand why people even use them or why they even still exist, but then again, some people are like lemmings. They just keep walking till they fall off a cliff. So one place to go to uh, check it out is cardanalysissolutions.org. I believe it's actually Card Solutions, but I will verify that and put that in a link on the bottom where you can actually go and search for credit unions and you can find out uh, you know, how the credit union rates on a rating of one to five stars, if it's a federal or chartered, if they own their own credit card program and so forth and so forth, that will be a link underneath. And I recommend when it comes to banking, any kind of banking, you make sure that you check out your fees, your interest rates on credit cards, your loans, any restrictions, obligations that you may have, certain requirements for deposits, etc., etc., etc. Now remember, if you have a credit union that outsources their credit cards to a bank, in my opinion, you're not dealing with a credit union, you're dealing with a credit bank. And a credit bank, in my opinion, is a credit union that offers some services as a credit union does, but then allows the bank to regulate your interest rates on your credit cards. Not in my inter not in my opinion, the best thing. For instance, in 2008, I had a 10.5 percent bank card interest rate, 10.5 when percent. When the economy started to collapse, I was notified that I could pay off my balance within a certain number of months, I believe it was three months, or... Uh, except the 17.99% that they jacked me up to, even though I had had the card for five years, never made a late payment, never went over the limit, nothing else. Well, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. A federal credit union can't charge more than 18.9%. Now, I have two credit cards, exactly the same amount of credit. The bank one is 20.99%, which, of course, I pay that balance off every month in full, never giving them any finance charges whatsoever. And my credit union one is 10.4%. When I, if I was to take money out on my uh, credit card, uh, my credit union credit card, my interest rate for cash withdrawals or my interest rate from purchases are exactly the same. Try that with a bank card. You'll have your interest rate for purchases and then what is it, 20, 25, 29% to withdraw money from your credit card in case of emergency with a bank compared to a credit union. So you can see the nickel and diming, how it gets larger and larger and larger as we go on and on and on between banks and credit unions. My preferred, which I have been with almost 12 years, is with a credit union because I left the banks when I started to get nickel and dimed and I said, no, no, no. I want my money for me. I'm not giving it to your shareholders. I'm not giving it to you for funds and fees and regulations and restrictions and these change faster than Facebook changes their privacy policies. So some basic information you need to go do your research and the link underneath will be there for you to go and examine and compare different credit unions, state, federal, interest rates, if they own their credit card division, if they've outsourced it to a bank, you'll find all this information on the link below. So be smart, be wise, and when it comes to nickel and diming, nickel and dime yourself, don't allow the banks to nickel and dime you. Have a good day, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.